A second booster now available at health district clinics and pharmacy locations across the valley. The FDA has approved a fourth dose for the immunocompromised in those over the age of 50. A bit controversial because there are some experts who doubt the overall effectiveness. We're going to break this down for you. The booster shot debate is returning. We are working to get some answers for you, of course. We have Dr. David Weissmiller of the Kirk Kerkorian School of Medicine at UNLV here to discuss. Thank you so much for your time. You are quite welcome. We greatly appreciate that. All right, the um, latest data from Nevada. Nevada Health Response released this week shows COVID numbers still on the decline. Now cases continue to drop. Uh, they're certainly a far cry from the peak level you can see here on the chart that we hit during the Omicron surge back in January. Same with hospitalizations. So, Doctor, do you what do you say to people who question whether or not the fourth dose is necessary? So, at this point, I think the fourth dose is necessary for a select group of people. Those who are severely immunocompromised, so if they have severe kidney disease okay. or if they've had an organ transplant or, for example, they have um, some form of malignancy or cancer in which they're being treated right now. But those are the highest risk groups. And if you look back to when we gave the first immunizations to those groups, they were the first group to get the booster right. because they had not responded to the initial vaccine series. I think the most important thing that we have now with the um, ability to give a second booster is that if we have some type of sudden drastic change in terms of what we're seeing in terms of infections, yes. we would have the authority in place to go ahead and give that boost. But for most individuals, the most important thing are the two initial vaccines of the mRNA vaccine yes. and then the initial boost because those patients or those individuals will do the best in terms of preventing hospitalization and preventing death. Certainly. Thank you for that clarification. Um, the Omicron subvariant BA2, now the dominant strain here in the States, um, it's faster spreading. So what did the latest studies show about how the second booster increases the protection, as you've been talking about? Well, whenever we're looking at giving a boost, it's yeah. always about increasing circulating antibody. And we know that quickly wanes. The other important side to the immune system, though, is what we call cellular immunity, and that's what creates the memory that we have. So right now, since we're not seeing an enormous surge in this area, and relatively speaking, nationally not seeing a surge, yes. for the otherwise healthy individual who's gotten both of their primary immunizations and a boost, they should have sufficient um, uh, immune fighting ability against the current variant. What we don't want to see is we have a surge later in the year and we need to use that boost to get that circulating immunity up again so we can immediately uh, fight the infection which is at hand. Okay, well we will continue this conversation at our 4.30. Thank you so much for your time right now, Doctor. To be continued, Christian, we're going to send it back to you, but first we do want to know what your thoughts are on the booster. If you'd like to get involved with our Twitter poll, please do. Right now we've got about 44% who say they won't be getting theirs and about 56% saying um, they won't and 44% saying yes. So I got that wrong. There we go. I clarified it up. All right, Christian, back to you. All right, Kira.